worship Him. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord. This is the way we're going to do church. This is the way we're going to pray. There's no turning back. This is a move of God. It's not by our strength. It's not by our ability. But it is a move of God within our lives, within our church, within our region. It's a move of God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you are feeling good about right now? Come on, how many of you are feeling pretty good right now? I don't know about you, but I, I'm feeling all right. Yeah. We've been fasting. We've been praying. And hasn't God been pouring into us? Has he been pouring into us? And we're getting ready to, we're bringing it in for a landing. But because there's so much power that's in this room, can you feel the power that is in this room? Come on, can you feel the power that is in this room? And in a few moments as we close out this all night prayer meeting, we're going to do it in warfare. Because God's given us a mission and a task. Be seated for just a moment. There's a scripture there in the book of Zechariah, chapter 8, verse 12, and it reads like this. It says, for the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give its fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. There's the two channels of water. The two sources of water. But there's another scripture that the Lord gave me before I came tonight. And it's the same one that we opened up with. And it's in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12. It says, the Lord will open to you his good treasure. The heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Give the Lord a good praise here today. Come on. For the next few moments, I want to talk to you about planting a seed under an open heaven. Lord, we know that every seed that is planted and that is watered from heaven has to grow. We've heard it throughout this evening. We read it in your word. So, Father, tonight we bring a seed. We prepare a seed. And, Father, we ask, oh, God, that heaven would be poured out upon it in Jesus' name. We are in a new year, a new decade, a new season, a new atmosphere, and in a place where we have been renewed. I don't know about you, but I feel renewed. How about you? And so now in this time of renewing is the time to plant a seed. See, and understand that the ground is moist because we have been digging wells of revival. And the heavens are open because we have been praying and fasting and rain is falling. So whatever seed you plant will grow. Catch that. Whatever seed you plant will grow. I'll say it again. Whatever seed you plant, it will grow. The ground is moist. Rain is coming. So whatever seed you plant, it will grow. God promises it. Isaiah 119 says this. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Psalms 81 verse 10 reads like this. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land of Egypt 
open your mouth wide and I will fill it. I will fill it. When you plant your seed in this season, I got news for you. You better get ready to work to receive the harvest that God has for you. Because God has a harvest that he wants to pour out upon our churches, upon our lives, and upon our family. God has blessed us, but he still has more for you. You think it's good now? I got news for you. It's going to get better. It's going to get stronger. It's going to get stronger within your life. He said, how good can it get? Let me tell you, we serve a good God. We serve a God that goes from level to level, from glory to glory. If you think it's good now, you ain't seen nothing yet. We just barely kicked off this decade. God still has more for you. And see, whenever you plant a seed, we have a tendency to watch it. And when we begin to watch it, there becomes an affection towards what we plant. And something that we need to understand, when that affection is upon our lives for what we planted, there becomes a deep emotion in our heart, and we begin to be attached to it. Just like you hear today, just like you heard last night, this morning, as we begin to close out this prayer meeting, you begin to hear, this is the way we will do church. This is the new. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back to the old. I've experienced something fresh. I've experienced something new. I've experienced a move of God upon my life, and I want to live in this move. So now that's why we've got to continue to plant and sow. See, we've been planting seeds of prayer. We've been planting seeds of worship. We've been planting seeds of fasting. We've been planting seeds of loving the Lord with everything we have. And we've been walking in righteousness. I can honestly say that we've been giving the, we've been loving the Lord with everything we have. We've been consecrated, we've been separating ourselves, and it's not over yet. We still got another week. We still got a few more days to continue in this consecration with God and prayer and fasting. And I believe by the time this fast is over, you are going to experience a breakthrough. You are going to experience miracles. You are going to experience a brand new you inside of your life. But there is an area that we must believe for that I believe God wants us to zero in on. And that is an affection for God's house. An affection for God's house. And I'll tell you why. Because the spotlight of heaven is upon our church. The spotlight of heaven is upon our churches. And I began to look throughout our audience. And as I was praying throughout this whole entire evening, I couldn't help to think about the churches that are here with us. Victory Outreach El Cajon, Victory Outreach Escondido, and Victory Outreach San Isidro. You are in the building here today, and I got news for you. The word that the Lord gave me for our church is just not for our church, but it's for your church as well. And I believe that there needs to be an affection for God's house because there's a spotlight upon our church. There's a spotlight upon your church. There's a spotlight upon your church. There is a spotlight upon your church to make a difference in your city. See, it is time for the affection to rise even more deeper. And when it comes to the house of God, when it comes to the house of God, there needs to be a deep affection. And I got some information for you for this house. We are at a standstill when it comes to our building. We are at a standstill. If you don't know, we have plans and we're prepared and we're ready and we want to push back the wall. I'll tell you why we got to push back the wall. Because there's no more room. We need to be able to make space for families and souls that will come into this house. But we are at a standstill with the city. We are at a standstill with the city. And it's time to turn up the heat for the affection of God's house. 
in El Cajon, Escondido, and San Isidro. I came to let you know it's time to turn up the heat in your building and where you are now. I've been to one of you, I've been to all your buildings. It's too small. It's too small. It's too small. You can't fit no more. It's time to turn up the heat and get the house of God that God desires for you to have. He didn't call us to be small. He didn't call us to have a small place. You don't fit there no more. It's time to turn up the heat. And this is how King David put it there in 1 Chronicles 28, verse 10. It says, consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. So be strong and do it. Be strong and do it. There is a command upon our lives as leaders, as pastors, as ministers to build the house of God. And David had an affection to build the temple. He had an affection to build God's house. And there's three affections that we need to internalize. And the first one is this, is that we need to have an affection to pray for his house. And that's what we're doing. That's what we've been doing. And if you begin to study the word of God, you will see that David rallied the officers, the leaders, the people of God, and all the mighty men of valor, the women of valor, the men and women of God. And they all had an affection for God's house because they loved what was happening in their lives. And understand this. It's not just your pastor's job, our pastor's job, or just a few of the leaders to begin to pray and to begin to believe God. It is going to take all of us corporately begin to pray, corporately begin to stand together. It's not just your pastor's responsibility to look for a building. It's just not our pastor's responsibility or just a few of us leaders to begin to pray for this building expansion to take place. It is going to take all of us corporately praying to see this wall come down. It's all of us together. And it's not about the practical because we've already done the practical. We've already drawn up the plans. We were already in position. We've already done. But now it's about the principalities and the high places. We've done the practical. We spend the money. We made the plans. We've done all of that. It's already in place. They already said this is easy and it can be done. So now we've got to go after the principalities and the high places. And we're going to go to that high place. Because the reality of it is, there's one person, there is somebody, there is a leader in the city that has to make a decision. That's what it's boiling down to. It's boiling down to somebody that is a leader in the city that will look at the situation and begin to make a decision. See, principalities means a higher ruler. Hire, hire a ruler. And there is a leader in the planning department that needs to make a decision. I'm going to just call it out the way it is. There's a person there that needs to say, you are approved. You are ready to build. And we need to pray because it's time that we build this place. And it needs to look like a house of worship. It needs to look like a house of worship. It is time for El Cajon, Escondido, and San Isidro to begin to build because your place needs to look like a house of worship. See, people tell us all the time, I would have never known what's happening on the inside because of the way it looks on the outside. We get that all the time. I would never have known what was happening in the inside by the way it looks on the outside. The spotlight of heaven is upon us. It's time to pray over the plans at the city that someone would say yes or correct what needs to be corrected. I don't know about you, but we're ready. We are ready to build. There just needs to be somebody that will say yes. See, the prayer is this. Lord, open heaven 
over the one that gives a stamp. Lord, open heaven over the one that begins to give the stamp because there is a leader, there is somebody in a high place that can say yes and begin to give us the stamp. God began to show me that there is somebody that can say yes. I don't know about you, but I understand leadership. When, when, when a leader stands up and says something, something happens. When a leader gets up and says something, makes something work, something happens. So there's a leader in the city. There is a leader that heaven needs to open up over them so that we can do what God has called us to do. El Cajon, Escondido, and San Isidro. Get ready because you're going to have to go before somebody one day. And so I would say you begin to prepare now. Churches begin to prepare now. Pray for your church. Pray for your city. And pray that when you begin to approach that development apartment, that heaven would be opened over those people. I'm telling you, we're going to do warfare in just a moment. Second affection we need to have is that we need an affection to pronounce. We need an affection to pray. We need an affection to pronounce. Pronounce means to make a sound. Get one's tongue. Proclaim, declare, and decree. And that's what we just did. But there needs to be sound that comes from victory outreach. There needs to be one sound that will come from, from us as the people of God, as the church. We need to pronounce it that this wall will come down. You will get a building. El Cajon, I declare it over you. You are going to get a building. Escondido, you are going to get a building. San Isidro, you are going to get a building. VOSD, this wall is going to come down. We are going to speak it over in 2020. It is coming down. You're getting a building. You're getting a building. And you're getting a building. And don't you dare be timid that you can't do it. You serve a big God. You serve a miracle working God. You serve a God that is able to open heaven over your ministry. First Chronicles 28 verse 20 reads like this. And David said to his son Solomon, be strong and of good courage and do it. I like his attitude. He kept saying, just do it. And do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord your God. My God will be with you. God is with us. God is with us. And God is with you. See, we are declaring that this wall comes down. Well, I'll say it again. We are declaring that this wall is going to come down. Say it with me on the count of three. Say this wall is going to come down. One, two, three. This wall is going to come down. Together. This wall is going to come down. Again, this wall is going to come down. God is with us. God is for us. And God will do it. When we pronounce that this is going down, that means we have an affection for the house of God. And the third and the final point is this, that we need an affection to pray. We need to have an affection to pronounce. But we also need to have an affection to prepare. To prepare. First Kings 29 verse 1 reads like this, the temple is not for man but for the Lord. See, the spotlight of heaven is over on our churches. And we need to get moving on having something nice for the kingdom. So our outside can reflect what's happening in the inside. See, we need an affection to prepare for the second financial phase for when we get our permits, VOSD. We need to be ready. Look to your neighbor and tell them we need to be ready. We need to be ready. See, many of us, and those El Cajon, Escondido, San Isidro, lock in here for just a moment. You've seen we've given and you've seen we've sacrificed and the people have given. And we've done that. 2019, we've done that. We've done that. Thank you. God has blessed you. God has opened heaven over your life, over your finances, over your business. And the people of God have been blessed. But I like how David began to put his affection there in 1 Chronicles 29, 
verse 3, it says, Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house, my own personal treasure of gold and silver. See, it's time for us to prepare. And we know the story because David had an affection he had for the house of God. So what did he do? He began to prepare for the holy house. What am I saying here today? I'm just saying simply prepare. Because the moment we begin to pray in this year that this wall begins to come down and we begin to zero in on this stamp. We begin to zero in on whoever needs to authorize for this wall to come down. When we begin to zero in and they begin to give us the approval, we need to be prepared financially. So all I'm saying here to you here today is get ready to prepare your seed for the next wave of the financial seed that you got to begin to sow. And so my challenge is, if you notice, there wasn't the challenge that was on the decree because I'm going to give it to you right now. Here is the challenge. I challenge you to begin to prepare a seed. These next couple of weeks, begin to prepare a seed. I know you're praying and you're fasting. I believe you ought to sit down with your spouse, begin to talk and begin to pray as the, as the Lord begins to open heaven over our building, over the city, that these permits begin to come through, that you need to begin to say, what kind of seed will I begin to prepare and sow? I believe it's going to be a powerful seed. Because you know what the Lord showed me in prayer? That this time... In this next season that we are in, this new season, this revival season, this season of digging wells, this season of open heaven over our lives, you know what's going to happen? You ain't even going to need 90 days to pay off your pledge. I'll say it again. You ain't even going to need 90 days to pay off your pledge. You know it now. You're getting prepared now because when that day comes, you are going to say, what's the amount? Here it is because God has blessed me. Heaven was opened up over my life, so I am prepared. You ought to give the Lord some praise right there because I'm talking about your blessing. I'm talking about your harvest. I'm talking about what God's going to pour out over your life. You ain't even going to need 90 days. Because you have prepared. David said, I have portioned gold for gold, silver for silver, wood for wood, iron for iron. And here's the thing. You already know God's going to bless you. You already know God's going to bless you. Those that you've given to your churches, Alcohol and Escondido, San Isidro, and here in San Diego, you, got, you already gave, you've given last year, you've given before, and look what happened. God blessed you. I see you. God's blessed you. I see you. I see what God's doing in your life. God's blessed you. So you already know it. So you might as well just prepare. You might as well just prepare and get ready for the seed that you're going to begin to sow. And pastors, I would say, you know what? God begins to stir your heart. You need to begin to start looking for a building. You need to begin to start pledging for a building. You need to begin to get ready because heaven is going to open up over your church. You already know God's going to bless you. So don't even fight it. Don't even mess with it. Just roll with it. Are you ready to build something beautiful for God? Come on, Victor Average. Are you ready to build something beautiful for God? But here's the posture that we need to first do. Is that we need the posture of Joshua. There was a certain posture and an attitude that was happening there. And you know the story. Let me read it to you. Joshua 6, verse 3. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. Do we got any men and women of war in the building? Come on, do we got any men and women of war in the building? Come on, give me some energy. You've been here all night. You've been here the last eight hours interceding and praying and believing God for breakthroughs and miracles. And heaven has been opened up over you. And it goes on to say that you shall go around the city once. This you shall do six days. 
And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times. And the seven priests shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass. And when the day, and when they make a long blast with the horns, with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat. Is there a shout in you this morning? I'll say, is there a shout in you this morning? Because when there's a sound and when there's a shout, things begin to fall. And I've declared that for the next seven days, the city is going to hear from Pastor Miller. The city is going to get a phone call from Pastor Miller and Brother Paul. We've been on this bark. We are going to call for the next seven days. And we're going to believe God for breakthrough. We're going to believe God for miracles. We're going to believe God for an answer. We're going to believe God for some leader to rise up and say something. Say something. Give them money. Make a change, whatever they got to do. We're going to make the city say something. I'll say it again. We're going to make the city say something. Hey, we know where the office is at, right, Brother Paul? We know where the office is at. If they ain't picking up the phone, we're going to knock on the door. The city's going to know us. The next seven days, we're going to go and we're going to make them answer and say something. If it's to change the plans, give them more money or give us the approval. Whatever it is, we are going to make them say something. We got to make them say something. Stand with me here tonight. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get ready to close, but we're going to do something a little different. We've been praying. We've been worshiping. Now, I don't know about you, but my blood, my adrenaline is moving right now. I, I, I'm ready. Felt like it worked out. I came up here earlier. My Apple Watch kicked on and said I did a mile and a half while I was up here. I'm telling you, I'm feeling good. Been fasting, we've been praying, feeling good. But understand this, is when we stand at the place of need, we begin to pray with more heat. In other words, there's got to be action. There's got to be action. And that's what the Lord began to show me through this whole time of separation, this whole time. What have we been doing? We've been putting action. We've been putting action to what we wanted to see. And because of that action, there has been breakthrough. There has been, uh, the Lord has been speaking to us. So we got to begin to put some action to it. That's why the Lord says, you want to see a result, then you've got to begin to put some action behind it. And that's why we're going to make them say something. Victory Outreach, El Cajon, Escondido, San Isidro, you need to begin to knock on doors and you need to begin to let people begin to start say something to you. Yes, you can have this building or no, you can't have this building. Make them tell you something. Make them say something. Because when they're saying something, that means you're doing something. When they're saying something, that means you're doing something. If they ain't saying nothing, it's because you ain't doing nothing. But I got news for Victory Hours. We have been doing something. We have been tilling the ground. We have been digging wells. We've been drilling wells. And water is springing up. We have been worshiping. So heaven has been opened up over our lives. We've been doing something. But here's what we need. We need to pray on site with insight. We need to pray on site with insight. This is where we need to go to the high place. You know why? Because we, we did the practical. We did all that. We've done that. It's easy. It's simple. It's good. We've done that. But now we need to go to the high place. We need to go to the high place. Pull down. I'll say it again. I pull down. Pull down those high things. Pull down those high things. And there's enough power in this place to pull down every principality, to pull down every demonic struggle, to pull down the 
those things that stop us. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for this wall. And we're going to tell this wall, you're going to go down. Wall, you're going to go down. We're going to say, we're going to go down. Going down so that more souls and families can begin to come into this place. I just wonder tonight if our worship team can just kind of take us back to that old school song. Come on. That old school jam. Going up to the high places. Cause we're gonna tear that devil's kingdom down. Yeah. 